Hello students, welcome to Extreme Telugu. We are discussing chapter number 3 Acids, Bases and Salts under 10th class chemistry. In this video, we are going to be discussing about water of crystallization. What is the meaning of water of crystallization? And why exactly water enters the crystals of salts? As you know, all the salts are having crystal structure. What is the meaning of crystal structure? For example, if you consider a matchbox, the corners of the matchbox, that is nothing but cube, has got corners, eight corners are there. And uh, these corners, the places of these corners are occupied by the atoms of the salt. Say NaCl is there sodium atoms and chlorine atoms are going to be occupying these corners probably center sometimes face centered uh, crystals are going to be there or cubic uh, crystals are going to be there if atoms are taking the corners then what is the space which is present between these corners occupied by whether it is empty Ah, many times it is going to be empty but sometimes the space present between these corners is going to be occupied by water and the water which occupies the space in the crystals of salts is called as water of crystallization simple example your uh, common salt eating salt is there take eating salt in its powdered form there is no water present inside but add one to two drops of water the entire water is absorbed by the salt and uh, the salt uh, becomes uh, a crystal or else it gets toughness and that tough uh, structure is simply to be called as crystal okay now if at all there is no water in the salt then it is called as anhydrous salt. There is no water present in the salt. That salt is called as anhydrous salt. If at all some salt is present, some water is present in the salt, then it is called as hydrated salts. So what are hydrated salts and anhydrous salts? Salts in which water is present is called as hydrated salts. Salts in which no water is present are called as anhydrous salts. Here are some examples of hydrous salts. First one, copper sulphate. Copper sulphate generally has five molecules of water in its uh, each crystal at room temperature, at room temperature, normal temperature. Any copper crystal will be having five molecules of water. One copper sulphate molecule can give accommodation to five water molecules that much bigger space they can form a crystal for one molecule next one is calcium sulphate calcium sulphate can have half a molecule of water or calcium sulphate can have two molecules of water also if it is having half a molecule of water, then it is called as POP, plaster of Paris. You see, plaster of Paris is used for uh, false ceiling or making some idols like Ganesh idol, Durga Mata idol or any toys which are made up of plaster of Paris, POP. It consists of half a molecule of water. But whenever it is added with some more water, then one and a half molecule of water probably if it is added then half plus one and a half will become two molecules of water then it is called as gypsum so half a molecule of water is there means it is called as plaster of paris pop then one and a half more water molecule is added then it becomes gypsum and once uh, it converts into gypsum then it becomes tough enough and it cannot be further brought back to the plaster of Paris. It cannot be made plaster of Paris back. So, while storing plaster of Paris, make sure that 
you are storing it in waterproof and moisture proof containers why why because if they are not stored in moisture proof containers and waterproof containers then the moisture present in the air or water available nearby may mix with this and it turns into gypsum where it becomes useless for you next sodium carbonate na2co3 it has got 10 molecules of water so sodium carbonate has got big crystal within which 10 molecules of water can be accommodated so the water which is present inside the crystal of salt is called as water of crystallization sometimes this may give the crystal a special property say its color can be changed if copper sulfate is taken without water it is white in color but when water gets added into the crystal then it turns blue so hydrous or hydrated copper sulfate is blue in color unhydrous copper sulfate is white in color there is a small activity using which you can understand what is hydrous salt and what is unhydrous salt say copper sulfate take copper sulfate which is available in your laboratory and put it in a test tube generally it is going to be blue in color why because at room temperature some water is going to be there inside the crystal that is nothing but water of crystallization now using a stand and a lamp or else a, a bunsen burner use a burner to heat this test tube consisting of copper sulfate crystals after heating for two to three minutes you will observe that the crystal has become white the color blue color of crystal has come to white indicating that the water which is present in the crystal has got evaporated that means we have taken the water out of the crystal so as water of crystallization has gone it turns white but as soon as you cool it down or you add some water it once again turns blue acquiring the water of crystallization so finally the conclusion is water of crystallization is nothing but water present in the crystals of salts is called as water of crystallization if the salts have water then they are called as hydrous or hydrated salts if they don't have water they are called as unhydrous salts and uh, don't forget to remember these examples of hydrated salts one is copper sulfate second one is calcium sulfate third one is sodium carbonate hope you understood this class if you understood this class and if you liked this class please subscribe our channel extreme thailand thank you